Microsoft has just updated the Windows 11 Insider builds actually a couple of times, adding some really big, really interesting features, one in particular that I am absurdly excited about. So let's take a look at these features right now on my Surface Pro 7. So the first of these sort of tablet enhancements are actually from the 22567 update. So we're going to talk about that one, and we're also going to talk about the 22572 update because that brings some other stuff. But we're starting with the 567 update first. So see here, my keyboard is attached. But watch what happens here. Whenever I disconnect my keyboard, boy, that is a strong magnet, you'll see that the taskbar icons have now gotten a bit bigger. They space themselves out a bit as well, making it easier to interact with them. But there's actually an additional thing going on here. Let me go ahead and open up my web browser here, and you will see that the taskbar has now shrunk itself away down here to a much smaller footprint. And this is a feature that we actually saw in photos on Surface Neo. And now this feature is coming to Windows 11. If you want to access these icons, simply swipe up and there they are. But for a device like this, for a tablet, the ability to have these icons effectively just be hidden. Of course, when you just tap on the screen anywhere else, it's going to go away again. That just gives you more screen real estate. And honestly, I think this is a pretty good feature. Obviously, when the keyboard is reattached, it goes back to how it was before. I don't remember if I talked about this one before or not, but in terms of some animations here on the device, if you swipe up from your taskbar, you get a really nice and smooth animation there pulling up your start menu. And you'll notice that it does track along with your finger, which is really, really nice. You also have the same thing over here, if I can do it, over here on your sort of quick settings, uh, that little Chrome OS rip off -y looking area over here to the side which seems to sometimes like to work and sometimes not so much. See, is there a particular spot I need to do it from? No, no. That's definitely something that could use a little bit of work. So I go too far that way and I get the start menu. If I go too far this way, it doesn't work. There we go. That's a little bit finicky. We also can, of course, swipe over from the side and bring out our notifications, and that generally works pretty well. And you'll see that it does track with my finger as well. Swiping over this side to bring out the widgets is a little bit weird because, one, I don't ever use, as you can see, I don't use these widgets. They don't even want to load, but they don't track. They just kind of jump out on their own. That's a little bit annoying. And on the start menu, you can swipe over to your apps, and the same thing is true there. It just kind of gives goes at the speed that it wants to go at and that's a little bit weird so there's some weird disjointed stuff there's some weird stuff with getting this one to work every time but it's a step in the right direction speaking of this quick settings down here now you actually should if i can get it to work if you actually open this up now you can actually pair things much more easily from that menu itself so before to get to that kind of thing you would have to literally open up your bluetooth settings to get that you can now just do it from that menu which is quite a good improvement we also have an improvement to the snapping menu. So let's open up the web browser. Let's open up uh, YouTube in a web app and let's open up a file browser. And if we then start to drag one of these things around, if it will let me, you'll see this little thing pop up at the top of the screen. And if I drag up to it, I can access my snaps here and I can let go and then I can go boom and boom and that works really really well you can sort of slide along this way and you'll see that it's a bit smoother because apparently they're not letting all of them be running in real time and that's supposed to make it be a bit smoother and i don't know i can probably see a little bit of smoothness there at any rate snapping is really really good on windows 11 again just to drag it up here let's put that there and let's put uh, file explorer over there that stuff works really really well but one more kind of really interesting and strange thing that they're doing with these snap layouts. Now let's go ahead and open up another tab, minimize that and bring it up to a snap menu and put that there. You'll see that my other tab is an option here. So I've got Twitter in a tab. If I hit it here, it's going to kill that tab and open it up like that. And for someone that does a lot of work in a web browser, that is absolutely brilliant. Hey, congrats to Ian for hitting 13,000 subs. Good job, buddy. And speaking of tabs, in the 22572 update, they have finally, finally added the ability to have tabs 
in your file browser. Oh my lord, this is so flipping good. I'm so glad that this is finally here and it's something you do have to do a little bit of work to enable, but I'm going to show you very quickly how to do it because it's actually quite simple. So there's going to be a link in the description down below. So in that link, scroll down, open up this GitHub website, download that Vive tool zip file, and then just follow these instructions. Extract it, open up command prompt as an administrator, CD your way into the path. So type in CD and then the path to that exact folder. Once you've done that, paste that in, reboot your computer, and you will have tabs running. It's basically just enabling something that's already there. I assume this will get fully enabled in later updates as well. It does appear to be coming very soon, and I'm very, very excited. So they've also added the ability in this build to turn Do Not Disturb on directly from your notifications there, and that is super simple. What a, what a just an obvious thing to have done, and I like that quite a bit. And last, and unfortunately, probably least, they've added a new app to uh, the default apps here, and it is one called Clip Champ. So you're going to see this now in your list of apps here, and it is a video editor that is a web app, and there's nothing wrong with that in and of itself. I like the idea of using as many web apps as possible. You see in my task manager here, web app, web app, web app. I like web apps. However, this one here, as we kind of get logged in and signed up here, let's let's look at it quite briefly. And I can pretty quickly show you what my primary problem is. Uh, maybe problems times two are with Clip Champ. So at first blush, it looks pretty good. You've got all these different templates that you can kind of use and so forth. I wish that scrolled that way instead of having to use a button, but whatever, it's fine. The first problem I have with it is the fact that in order to use, you have to literally upload your videos to this service so it's not working locally you gotta upload it and then be able to use them that can be a little bit weird and then the second problem is to do if anything of use you're gonna have to pay them money the basic free version only allows 480p exports in order to do 720p that's gonna cost you nine dollars a month and then that's, of course, for cloud storage, which I think is really important because let's say I upload files to ClipChamp to work on them on my on my tablet here. Cool, cool. I come back to my desktop and want to pick it up. That's not how that works unless you pay at least $9 a month. But if you want to export in 1080p like a normal human in 2022, that's going to cost you $20 a month. This is absolutely 100% not worth it. And in my opinion, this is easily the worst feature of these updates, which is not saying much great for ClipChamp because I would say that a do not disturb button is better than this because this is effectively useless. Apple has their own movie makers that are quite good, that are free, that are capable of doing far more than this. There are also a plethora of free video editing apps that you would want to use instead of this. I have no idea why even you're going to bother with this, why this is here. Total waste of time. But yeah, there you go. A ton of really good stuff. We have tabs coming in the file browser, guys. Lots of good stuff for tablets as well. Super excited about the future of Windows 11 on our different tablet -y devices. Can't wait to see more. Can't wait to see if more things about Neo come over to Windows 11. We just got their taskbar from Neo. What else might be on the way? What other maybe dual screen stuff might be being secretly slipped in behind the scenes? Stay tuned to find out, guys. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.